Well, good morning. It's great to have you here joining us in person and online. And uh, it's good to be back with you. I was away last weekend with my children uh, in Idaho and spending some spring, spring break time with them. And it's so good to be able to see your children taking on their faith and stepping into what the Lord's asked them to. And uh, that's such a blessing. And so it's good to have each one of you here. If you're a guest or visitor, there's a connection card in front of you. If you wouldn't mind filling that out. Or if you have an update to some, some information you've given us in times past, maybe you're taking on a new email, or maybe there's a new telephone number, uh, or something along that lines, it'd be great for you to just to give us a little quick update with that connection card there in front of you. Uh, here at Cornerstone, we're impacted for eternity to help bring redemption in the valley and beyond. And uh, we believe that all of us are a part of that. And uh, we uh, are, are embarking on a series to remind us of that and bring encouragement to the body. And so our series is rightly titled, The Body, as we continue to move through that. Pastor Matthew will share the message today. and looking forward to hear how the Lord is going to speak to him, or speak to us through him as he shares with us. Hey, I also wanted to say thank you. We had nearly 30 of us that were at the Young Life Banquet on uh, Wednesday this past week in some form or fashion. Uh, and so thank you for coming out and supporting the Young Life Endeavor. And uh, we're grateful for each one of you partnering in that way for not only the financial uh, uh, consistency, but also the, the faithfulness of prayer. And uh, we are thankful that Young Life is part of our uh, ministry, and uh, we endeavor to continue to care and support them as uh, they host their club meetings here on Mondays and Tuesdays at 7.07 p.m. in the youth building here we call The Rock. And so uh, thank you again for coming out and supporting Young Life. And then uh, VBS meeting is happening uh, this uh, morning following the service downstairs in the fellowship hall. We are so excited about the opportunities to be able to uh, connect with families and provide the opportunity for them to connect in VBS with us. We know there are many other VBSs that will be happening through the summer as well. Uh, so we're grateful for the body of Christ to be able to continue to encourage families and support them as uh, they're caring for their children and trying to raise them up in Christ. That's how we get to be a part of that is through VBS. And so come find out more information about it this morning following the service down the fellowship hall. Uh, Jen will lead us through our time of discussion and obviously she'll want to encourage you to get signed up for some opportunities to serve in those ways. And it's going to be a blast uh, coming up here in June, June 24th through the 27th. And then last but not least, uh, there is a memory verse that Pastor Matthew gave us last week to continue to kind of press into the message he shared with us. Does anybody uh, care to stand and share John 13, verse 35 with us this morning? Okay, I've got one over here. Perfect. Good job, Tom. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else? Do I hear something over here? No? Okay, I'm going to pray, and then uh, we'll go into our time of worship. Father God, we say thank you for the way that uh, as we look back over this past week that you've been with us, and you've helped us, Lord God, to know that you're in the midst of the, the struggle, in the midst of the joy, in the midst of the, the life that we're living currently. But Father, uh, this is a time where we can come together, be reminded, Lord, of your great love and encouragement, Lord, to continue to grow uh, with you and towards each other. And Father, I just pray a blessing upon Pastor Matthew as he shares a message this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we're going to get to hear uh, your, your voice speak to us through him. And then your Holy Spirit is here also, Lord, that will also speak to us. We pray, Lord, that we're responsive to you in this time, that we hear your voice, and uh, we, we have some opportunities, Lord, to have some takeaway from what you're going to share with us today. Thank you, Lord, for each person who's joined us. Lord, we just pray a blessing upon them as they're here. And uh, Lord, as we go into our time of worship, Lord, we just want to surrender to you because you're the one who is worthy of all of our praise. We pray these, in the mighty, these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. 
Amen. Well, good morning, church family. We're so glad that we get to worship with you this morning. Uh, last night, uh, yesterday afternoon, sorry, it started in the morning, we did some painting. So this back wall here, it was all dark brown. Now it's all light. Apparently, there wasn't enough reflection with just me and Mark's bald head, so they added a little bit more light for you. You're welcome. Wasn't that nice? <laughs> Will you stand up and worship with us this morning? And hey, we're going to be doing this song, A New Hallelujah. And uh, the second or second or third verse, it used to say Africa. We switched it to say Washington. Now that our African friends are actually living here in Washington, we thought, hey, this is the perfect time to change that. We also put a bridge in there where there's going to be an echo. The guys will sing it first, and then the girls will sing it second, just so you know. There's a new song breaking out from the children of freedom. Every race and every nation, sing it out, sing a new hallelujah. Yeah. Let us sing love to the nations. Bringing hope of the grace that has freed us. Make it known and make him famous. Sing it out, sing a new hallelujah. Yeah. Arise, let the church arise. Let love. Washington sings a new song, reaching out with a new hallelujah. Every son and every daughter, everyone sings a new hallelujah. Hey! Arise, let the church arise. parts whoa 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 yeah yeah let the song arise let the song arise yeah yeah let the song arise let the song church arise, let love reach to the other side, alive, come alive, let the song arise, everyone a new hallelujah everyone sing a new hallelujah give the lord a praise offering this morning amen thank you lord oh i love to hear the song of creation the wind and the rhythm of the rain oh the thunder it speaks of your power but there's something in the sound of the saints. I've been washed in the roar of the ocean. 
found peace in the echoes of a cave. And the trees of the field, they clap their hands. But there's something in the sound of the saints. From the lips of those you save, a redemption song will rise. With the sound so full, it cracks the sky. Whoa, we sing alleluia. Whoa, we sing amen. Hear the sound of the saints as we march on to Zion, singing alleluia, amen. Singing alleluia, amen. I will hear the chorus of the angels forever a symphony of praise. I long to hear the voice of my Savior, and he hears us the sound of the saints. From the lips of those you saved, a redemption song will rise. Every tongue, every tribe, hear the church your bride. Whoa, we sing alleluia. Whoa, we sing amen. The sound of the saints as we march on to Zion singing Alleluia, Amen. Singing Alleluia, Amen. Whoa. Jesus Christ, our Savior, King forever. Our hearts will rise, the saints will sing of Jesus Christ, our Savior, King forever. The sound of the saints as we march on to Zion singing Alleluia, Amen. Singing Alleluia, Amen. Whoa, we sing Alleluia. Whoa, we sing Amen. Hear the sound of the saints as we march on to Zion singing Alleluia, Amen. Singing. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide it trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our god sing with me how great is our god and all will see how great how great is our God. God. And age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, Lion and the Lamb, how great is our God, sing with me how great. 
hear your people sing. Holy to the King of Kings. Holy, you will always be. Lord, we are so grateful for just the life you've given us, Lord. You are holy forever. You are holy, 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 set apart above all things. And we know, Father, we know your love for us, how you care for us, how you just, how you just provide for us every single day. And we, Lord, are so grateful that we can stand here today and we have a right and, and we have a, a, a time where we can just worship you together. And we don't have to fight or we don't have to hide about it, but we know, Lord, that we can, we can worship you in this time. Lord, through all our worship, through all our worship, I pray, Lord, that you'll seek our hearts, that you'll seek our hearts in this time that lord through all the weight of the week and whatever we we bringing into the service lord that that we can lay it at your feet in this moment and we can just ask lord that you will just gather us together in your arms and you'll just hold us there and you'll uphold us in your right right hand that lord that we can find ourselves lost in your presence as you draw us deep Holy Spirit, come. Be a part of what we're doing right now. Be a part of our offering. I pray, Lord, that you'll be a part of the word, that you'll move our agendas out the way, our own thoughts and ideas, and that it'll be you and you alone. I pray for the kids' ministry as they are just preparing for for the word that will be shared and songs that they're going to sing and whatever they're going to do down there. I pray, Lord, that, that you'll just bless them. Lord, that you'll anoint that service. Lord, that those kids will each have something planted in them, Lord, that as they grow, Father God, that they'll remember. And that, Lord, each and every single them, single one of them will become children and adults, men and women with a heart after you. And we thank you, Lord, that not one of them will ever stray from your presence. Lord, we, we just pray, Lord, as we, as we go into a time of offering and giving, Lord, that our worship will remain. Lord, this is an act of worship. This is how we go forward and we just give of ourselves. We give of our tithes. We give of our offerings. We give, Lord, of ourselves in this time. And we pray, Lord, that you'll bless whatever's been given and that it will be multiplied back to the giver, Lord, that you will obviously use this time, the money that is going to be given, Lord, for your kingdom and the enhancement of your kingdom, Lord, as, it, as you bring wisdom to the teams that that decide how the money needs to be distributed to ministries and to community work and to all that. And we just thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in that. Lord, we just say thank you, and we just want to give this to you and just say, Lord, it's all for you. It's all to you, and it's all for you. In Jesus' name, amen. As we pass by. We want to thank you for your tithes and your offerings. For those who um, want to, we've made it a little bit easier. There's going to be a slide up that's going to have a QR code and a web address, as well as for those online, we just thank you for your offerings as well, um, which enhance the ministry. Why would I worry when giants come calling my name? My God is so much bigger than troubles I face. 
Why would I hunger for power or riches or fame? My God is so much better than all of these things. I won't be shaken. I won't be moved. My God is faithful. His promise is true. So I speak to the mountains. Oh, it's time to move. My God is bigger, better, stronger, greater than you. My enemies scatter because they know the battle is done. My God is stronger, the victory is already won. He died for my ransom and rose up on the third day. My God is greater than death, hell and the grave. I won't be shaken, I won't be moved. My God is faithful, His promise is true. So I speak to the mountains. God is bigger, better, stronger, greater than bigger, better, stronger, greater than you. Amen. 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 Don't you think our band is amazing? I just love them. Yeah. You are part of the bigger picture. You have a part in the big picture. And not one of you is excluded from that statement. Every single one of you, there is a plan and a purpose and calling upon your life. Think about that. Every single one of you, whether you are nine months old or 99 or 199, I know we don't live that old, but <laughs> See, last week we had a message that was just, it was just one of those messages. Don't ask me what happened because I have absolutely no idea. I had absolutely nothing to do with it. But God did something in last week's message that just brought people out of the works a little. And I was so grateful to see when people could come and, and they've got this, this heart of like, I, I want to be, I want to belong. I want a place where I don't feel alone and, and I want to, I want to feel connected. And this happened. Then we had community group leaders that were saying, hey, I got people that came to my group that just like never come before. And, and it's so great to see these new people. And, and it was fantastic to see. And, and you know what? We all belong to a community. Look around you. We're all part of a community. And the invitation is out there for this community. But it goes beyond our immediate circle of influence. And this is why we are doing the series today called The Body. All right. We've got a few more weeks to go in the body. And this is going to be crucial. This is something we're hoping and praying that you will take to heart and you'll embrace and you'll run with. That you understand where you belong your purpose and your calling in the body. Because we feel that the Lord is 
going to lead us through this series in helping you to, number one, understand that you are part of the bigger picture, right? And number two, we're hoping and praying that you will understand the importance of being plugged in to the body. Let me tell you, church is not at home necessarily by yourself. There's a time for spending time alone with God. But God calls us into the body of believers, into the community where we can be built up and strengthened, and we too can be an influence. Number three, we hope that we can guide you to growth within the body so that the body as a whole can grow. And number four, we would like to take you through the different aspects of fulfilling your purpose within the body. Because each and every single one of you has a purpose within the body of Christ. So as last week, when we spoke about community, I took you through Acts 2, and we discovered how the people engaged in community engaged in unity, and there was a community lifestyle, and it caused the church not only to grow, but to explode, right? And it was how they engaged with each other. Then we had our memory verse, and thank you, Pastor Mike, for reminding us of John 13, verse 35, because by this, all men will know that you are my disciples, says Jesus. For your love for one another or your love for other people. So how are we loving upon people today? So we had four simple application points from last week's message for those who missed it. And those were number one, to connect. All right? Do not do life alone. All right? Simple. Second one was to invite. Let's find people who are doing life alone and invite them in so that they are not alone. Then love. Let us love one another so that they may know Christ's love for them through your love for them. And the fourth one is give. That's part of a community. We saw how the people in Acts 2, they just gave of everything that they had. Some of them sold their, all their possessions. Please don't go sell your house and say, here it is, all to the church. I'm going to go live on the streets. It's not what I'm telling you to do. But what I am saying is, is we need to help our community because there are some people who can't, right? And it's not just about money, all right? I spoke about anything that you have the capacity to give. Give of your time, your love, your resource, skills, and maybe even your money, okay? And it's not just for this church. I'm talking about just the community as a whole. And then I ended off my message with a statement, and I said, let church be more than just a Sunday service here at 10 a.m. The church is the body of Christ that connects, fellowships, works together in the gifts and passions and still by God. Amen? And then the last thing I want to remind you of is the definition that I got from gotquestions.org. And they spoke about what a Christian or a gospel community is. And they summed it up like this. They said, simply put, the Christian community is composed of those who love Jesus and fellowship with each other. When the world sees the church in action, they should see the true love of Jesus and perhaps find themselves attracted to Christ too. So, in today's message, I want to build up on this one. You see, our purpose is in our relationship with God and with our relationship in our relationship with each other, okay? But there is more, okay? 
And as we take on this more, we find that God is, is going to help us to understand how, where we belong in the community. Now, we're also part of a body, and there's a difference. We have all heard about being part of the body of Christ. So what does that mean? What does it mean to be part of a, the body of Christ? Now, I want to put it this way. I um, don't have all my free hands today, so this might be a little bit difficult. So, this is you, okay? Now, we look at it, and we try to figure out what it is. We try to see what it is. We try to figure this out, right? And sometimes you might look at your life, and you think, ah, oh, it's okay. Maybe you might look at your life and say, I can't, I can't quite make it out. I can't quite see what's going on here. Or maybe you might look and say, oh, check out all those colors. It's great. All right? Okay? So we all have a different view of ourselves and how we look. All right? Then, as we go through life, we look at our neighbor. Okay? And we see our neighbor. But you see something completely different. Now, we can look at our neighbor and figure a whole lot of things when we see this. We see, but it looks like a blank page. Maybe because you don't know your neighbor that well. All right? Okay? Maybe we might see something that they've got and we're like, oh, that's so cool. Check out what they got. I want that on my side. I want that on my picture. All right? And God's like, well, I didn't quite put that in your picture. I didn't paint that one. All right? Or maybe you might look at it and go, hey, what's going on with that guy? I mean, do you see that smudge in the corner? What's with that? I mean, what is that, you know? Okay. We're all human. We can be a bit judgmental. But you see, what we don't realize is that our view is limited to us. It's limited to the people maybe just around us in our immediate circle, the people that we actually know. And we don't really see the bigger picture because we don't realize that God has a bigger picture in mind to what we see right in front of us. And we see God himself says in Revelations 1 verse 3, and we should all know this, he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, all right? In other words, I am the beginning and the end, the one who was and the one who is to come. I am the Almighty. So here he is saying, I was from the very beginning. I've seen how it started, and I am, not I will be, I am the end. In other words, I already know how it's going to play out. I already know the full painting and picture of life. It started way before Genesis 1 verse 1 in creation. And it ends way after Revelations 22, 20, 21. All right? The thing is, God knows the full picture. He has it all in mind. He is the beginning, and he is the end. Then we all know Isaiah 55, right? And we all know what he says. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. In other words, we cannot think or comprehend even a portion of what God thinks or comprehends. Especially not when it comes to our own lives. Especially not when it comes to your neighbor's life. Especially not when it comes to the church and the body of Christ. Our understanding is a mere grain of sand in the entire universe to what he understands. So let me tell you, you might not see it, but he does. God sees 
the bigger picture. He knows what is going on around you. He knows the heart of your neighbor and your pastor. And he knows the heart of your your children. He knows it all. You see, God has a purpose and plan for every single person within the global and local body of Christ. Each one of us has a story to tell. Each one of us has a part to play, a gift, a talent, whatever it is. You may be thinking that whatever you have is so insignificant, but let me tell you, it's created exactly for a purpose. You see, when he took you and he says, but I've got a place just for you, he knew exactly where you were going to fit in. He knew exactly how you were going to be a part of the bigger picture, right? And then you look at your neighbor and and you're busy judging him and you're like, but I don't get what's going on with this little picture. But everyone has a role in the body of Christ. And everyone has a place exactly where God has designed for them to go. And we can see that if we trust in what God has got for each person, the picture starts looking complete. Now, the thing is, when I held up that first picture, you never once imagined this is what you're going to get to, right? You can turn with me to 1 Corinthians 12, and I'll be using the ESV version. Now, every single place, every single believer has their place in the body. But however, we need to take up our role in the body of Christ. We need to embrace the gifts and the talents and the purposes and the plans God has for us. All right? In verse 1 to 11 of 1 Corinthians 12, Paul speaks about the gifts that he has given the people within the body. Now, he he mentions all these gifts. He speaks of prophecy, acts of service, worship, you know, um, wisdom, words of knowledge, discernment. The list goes on and on and on. Teaching, all right, or shepherding. These are gifts that God has given us. And some of them are gifts that he has empowered us to carry, and some of them are gifts that he gives us for the moment, for when we need it. Maybe you're sitting in a situation and you've never, ever given someone a word of knowledge or encouragement in your life, and suddenly God says, just go share Jeremiah 29, 11 with him, for God knows the plans I have for you. And that's that thing that comes right in the moment. And you're like, but I, I can't talk to them. I don't know how to do it. And suddenly you go to them and they're like, I was just thinking that, that, that God doesn't think I, I have a plan in my life. And you suddenly realize, but hold on. Maybe that was God. Maybe he gifted me with that just for that moment. And, you know, this is how it goes. And he speaks about these gifts. Now, these gifts, let me tell you this. They're not just cool to have, and it's not something that you go and you be proud of having, all right? A very famous evangelist that I know, Dr. Reinhard Bonke, he's a German, but he, he has brought millions, and he says, you don't wear those gifts like a mer- medal around your neck. He says, because they are a tool that God equips you with. To grow and encourage and equip the church. That's what it's for. So now he mentions all of this. And he speaks about all of these things. And we get to verse 12. You can follow with me if you'd like. And here he says, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. 
For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. Verse 14, he goes on and he says, For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. So do you see the puzzle here? Do you see that the body of Christ is not just reliant on one person, but of many people? Each one of us is integral to the body. Just so that I, I can put it out there, this painting, for those who don't know, was actually many, many years ago, I think she's like in her 20s now, was, was, was painted by a Lithuanian girl called Akiani. And she was eight years old when she had a vision of Christ. Well, she was four years old when she had a vision of Christ. And by the time she was eight, she could eventually do oil paintings and she could actually put to paper what she had seen at the age of eight. That was amazing. All right. Every single one of us is integral to the body. Now listen here, listen to verse 15, right? If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell. But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he does. Do you hear that? As he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. Do you see that? You cannot decide just because you don't feel like you're part of the body that you can decide, ah, oh, but I'm not there. Because God says, without you, the body is incomplete. And it's not reliant on one. Because I, I, if I had pulled that out first, you might figure out what that is. But I don't know. You know? I just didn't have a board big enough and to make this picture even bigger. Okay? But the thing is, he says, I want you exactly where I put you. I could take that piece, right? And, and, and we, we point this out because he says we cannot decide to try to be something we're not. God has given you gifts and talents to serve in the body where you're at. In verse 18 again, it says, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. So we don't get to decide where we actually get to be. We don't get to say, hey, I want to actually be here, over there. Because now what's going to happen to where God has put that? That, that looks weird, all right? Or maybe, maybe you want to flip yourself upside down. Huh? No? No? Exactly. All right. I might not have stuck that down properly. So it falls off. That might just be me falling off the bus. Okay. Sometimes we just need to rest in the fact that God knows best. Sometimes we need to rest in the fact that God knows best. Remember what Isaiah 55 says? Where he said, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Okay. See, the thing is, we need to trust that God knows better because maybe we are actually just a little short-sighted. We can't see past the boundary of our own fence. We're limited by time, which God is not, by the way. We're limited by space, which God is not because he is everywhere. We can only be in one place at once. Our bodies are very limited. And we are limited by matter. Because right now we are living in the physical realm. Right now. One day we will be able to be glorified with our spiritual bodies and all that. But right now we're in our physical bodies and we cannot see past our time, our space, 
and matter. All right? So we don't always know what's going on in the background. Sometimes God puts you in a place in the church to edify the church. Right? He does that. And sometimes he puts you in a place in the church because maybe you need to be there in order to grow. Maybe he says, I need you to be there so you can be, you can learn humility. You can learn teamwork. Maybe you can learn love and compassion. Maybe you can learn to step out of your box. And I'm putting you there, even if it's just for a season. And maybe you might enjoy it so much that God's not going to move you from there. I don't know. But God knows. Now, I remember volunteering in a church. And, and I mentioned last week, I spoke about the church hurt thing, right? Like, we get in a community, and some of us have experienced hurts. And I spoke about the fact that the church is not just church, as it's made up of people. And people are not perfect, right? So people make mistakes. And some of us here have experienced what we call church hurt. That's being hurt by people within the church. Now, I was... I mentioned that, and I was on like dire straits at one point, and I would not have made it out of that moment if it were not for a community of people who believed in me and helped me and walked alongside of me, and they saw it, and they said, hey, come with me, come spend time with us, come do this with us, and, and they spoke into my life, and they encouraged me, and I was in this like sort of sabbatical for years from being part of a, a church body and being part of what's happening. And that's not a good place to be. I'm just putting it out there, okay? God actually wants you to be plugged in. And so I started volunteering in a church after coming out of this sabbatical, all right? And I literally got a phone call from the lead pastor to say, Hey, Matthew, I want you to come to my church. And I want you to volunteer. And I'm like, really? <laughs> so I came. So I thought, okay, I'll do the sound. I'm good at doing sound and technical stuff. And yeah, I'll just do something like that somewhere in the background. It wasn't even three weeks and I was doing kids ministry. And I don't know, it wasn't my choice. It just started happening. Things just started falling into place. And I was volunteering everywhere in this church, right? So... <clears throat> I had I'd got this phone call, and it was so great, because here I am in this new church, and I actually remember praying to God, and I said to God, Lord, I want to I serve you. I do. But don't put me up front. Whatever you do. <laughs> okay? And I literally said these words. I said to him, I will scrub the toilets. I'm cool with that. Now, I've scrubbed a few toilets. I remember kids' ministry, and you know you get those kids that come to kids' church sick, and you've got to scrub that whole cubicle. I've done it. It's cool. All right. Some people don't handle it, but we won't go through that one. Okay. And I just said to him, I don't care where I serve. I don't want to be up front. I don't want to do this. I want to scrub a toilet. And sure enough, the lead pastor and his executive team, they felt to put me and asked me to volunteer in the exact ministry that I got hurt in, in the previous church. All right? And I loved it. Somehow it just fell into place and things went. And then they actually invited me to come work full time for them in that ministry. And I went through. And from praying, Lord, don't put me up front, and I don't really want to be in these ministries, and this is where I want to be, and here I am today. Talk about a sense of humor. <laughs> you see, God knows how to laugh. He knows. But you see, God in his infamous, infamous wisdom knows best. He knows exactly where he wants you, and he knows exactly where you are going to excel. Whether you are helping at the coffee station, help greeting people in the foyer, even though you're the most introverted person you know, and, or you're maybe helping clean up stuff around here, or you're volunteering down at Kids Church, 
God knows exactly where he's going to put you and exactly where you're going to excel. All right? And I'm so grateful. And I'm going to, I'm going to mention this publicly because I'm grateful to the pastor of that church, Pastor John Rabert, and his entire executive team, which is basically their board of administration, and how they believed in me, and they took me out of a place of hurt, and they guided me, and they discipled me back into ministry. Because I wouldn't be here today where I am if it weren't for how they saw what God wanted, and they realized I was missing from this puzzle. And the same thing is we, I look around at you and I say, where are you in our puzzle today? And this puzzle is not just the local body. This puzzle is the global body too. All right? Because there is a local body of Christ and a global body of Christ. So we need to trust that God knows best. Don't doubt that you have a place in the local body of Christ and in the global body of Christ. Romans 12, we're going to see the same conversation, and we'll get back now to 1 Corinthians 12. So I'm going to just put it up here on the screen so you don't have to turn there um, as well, because I'm going to use the message translation purely because it's how it conveys the actual message, and it is exactly what is said in all the other translations. It's just how it's worded, that it just comes out so beautifully. So this is the essence of what Paul is trying to say here in these, com in these conversations. And he says this in verse 4 and 5. He says, In this way, we are like the various parts of a human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us finds our meaning and function as a part of his body. Okay? Now, Jesus said it in this way in John 15. He gives this beautiful depiction of the vine and the branches. You remember that conversation? Just like we are the body of Christ and he is the head, all right? He is the vine and we are the branches that extend from who he is, right? And he says this in verse 4 and 5. Again, verse 4 and 5. Didn't even click that one. And it says, abide in me and I in you. So come on, be part of it. That's what he's saying. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you. Unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So when we decide to disconnect from the body, we are not going to achieve anything on our own. But when we do connect in and we become part of the body of Christ and we become part and we plug into Christ we too can have life and we can bear fruit and we can be part of the bigger picture. So my next point is this then, and it is that we need each other. Okay, so I spoke about this in community and I cannot emphasize this enough, so I'm going to just touch on it again. And we're still in 1 Corinthians 12, if you're still there, and we're going to move on to verse 21. And our next train of thought is this, verse 21. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Oh, that's rude. Nor can the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with great modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacks it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. 
If one member suffers, all suffer together. And if one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now, we spoke about this community last week, right? And how we need to be part of the greater community, how we need to be part of this picture, okay? God has placed people around you for a reason. Just accept it. They're there. Don't hide from them, okay? You could be a hand. God could have given you skills to work with your hands, and you could be a hand. But you know what? You're not going to be able to get to where you need to go or reach out if it were not for the arm. The hand cannot operate on its own. And you know what? That hand is not going to see what it needs to work on unless it has an eye. And if the eyes are not in the body, then how's the hand going to know where to reach? And if the feet are not in the body, then how is the body going to get there for the hand to do its work? In other words, each part of the body has exactly the same importance as the other. Do not think yourself better than the other just because one is the feet and one is the hand, and one is the eye, and one is the mouth. So, the thing is, the same way that this picture will be incomplete without you, it's the same way that it will be incomplete without your neighbor. And we know that this picture will never be complete without the other. So it is up to us as believers in the body to love one another, to encourage one another, not to judge one another. I know we can do that sometimes. I'm just as guilty sometimes, and I've got to remind myself, don't do it, Matthew. It's okay. They are human. It's fine. It is okay. And we cannot be like, but I want to be at the top of the head. Because it just ain't going to work anymore. So God says, even your neighbor has their part to play and exactly where they need to be. So we need to make sure that we remain where we need to be. And we allow other people to operate where they need to be. I mean, can you imagine if all of us in this church were the preachers? <laughs> Everyone with their own opinion. I'm not perfect at it. Trust me. But all of us are going to be fighting for the stage. That would be weird. No. Maybe, maybe no one wants to worship with song. And then we're going to sit here in silence for half an hour. Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9 to 12 tells us, and it's clear on, on doing things together. I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. And it says this, in his wisdom, Solomon writes, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they would fall, one would lift, the other, lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another. To lift them up. You see how we need each other? All right. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Now you see, when, when I, and I gave this analogy a while ago on climbing Mount Everest and all that type of stuff and how you need to have someone that knows the way. But here's the thing. When when a guy takes a whole group of people up Mount Everest, what he does is everyone has like a harness on them, and then he clips every single person in to the same rope, all right? Because what's going to happen is if someone goes and disconnects them from the rope, and a storm comes along and covers everything, and they can't see, and he falls down a crevice, absolutely nobody is going to know about it until the sun shines and the guide goes, Okay? The thing is, everyone needs to stay connected to the line because what happens is if something happens 
and someone falls into a crevice or someone slips down the mountain and he can't keep on, he's got an entire row of people that are going to keep him up and help him to get to the top. We too can do the same in the body of Christ. Romans 12 verse 3, Paul reminds us, For by the grace given to, to me, I say to everyone amongst you, do not think of yourself or do not think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. So I just want to say, don't think you can do it all alone. God has said, I created you in a community, within a body, for a reason. Let's encourage one another. Let's embrace each other's gifts. Let's take one another up in each other's arms. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11 to 15, Paul encourages us. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. We ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor amongst you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. And hear this out. Be at peace amongst yourselves. And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle. Encourage the faint-hearted. Help the weak. Be patient with them. See that no one repays anyone for evil for evil. But always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. What a reminder. Admonish the idle. Encourage the faint-hearted. Help the weak. Be patient with them all. So I want to remind you again. You are part of the bigger picture. You are part of the bigger picture. How are we going to engage this message today? How are we going to grow from this many? How are we going to embrace this thing today? And I want to just start off and remind you that you have a place in the body of Christ. Just because you cannot see the bigger picture, it doesn't mean that the bigger picture isn't there. All right? And then I want to tell you and I will remind you, do not undervalue your worth within the body of Christ. Nobody is insignificant within the body. Not one of you. I look around here and I see VIPs everywhere. Very important peoples. Very. And it is. And I say that not jokingly because I see each one and every single one of you. There's a gift and a calling and a plan and a purpose on your life. Do not undervalue your worth. Then thirdly, I want to say, understand God's plan for your life. Understand God's plan for you. Don't try to be who you're not. Okay? Your place in the body is intricately planned and purposed by God. He is the ultimate designer. He is the ultimate painter. He is the ultimate architect, right? Everything is intricately fit together and he knows best. I mean, if he can fit a sequence of DNA strands together in such a way that it creates you, I'm pretty sure he can fit you together with your fellow believers to create the body of Christ. There are many ways that we can find this out on what our plan and our purpose is, because not all of us, some of you are sitting there, but I don't know my plan and purpose. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's great. But let's work at it together. Let's start off by praying and asking God and seeking Him and say, Lord, please show me today what your plan is for me and how I can better serve the body. Then I ask you the question, what are your passions? All right? So within this understanding God's plan, what are your passions? 
okay? You might have a passion in your life. That could be, oh, I love working with old people. Like, I love it. I love going to a home and just having conversations with a 99-year-old man who's got stories to tell, and I help him to get to where he needs to go, and I help feed him, and I've got this passion. Or maybe your passion might be children, and you just love being around them and helping them. Or maybe your passion might be singing or playing drums, and you've actually practiced. Okay. Okay. We all have a passion to play drums and then, okay. But you might have a passion to, to worship and to do something and, and just worship God and sing and play guitar or, you know, play drums or play keyboard or whatever. And you say, hey, maybe this is my passion. Take those passions and just try serving in that area. Maybe you're passionate about just connecting with people and just talking to people. And greeting people and being happy around people. And people energize you. Then, then I want to encourage you to speak to Uncle Lynn and, 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 and to, to maybe serve as an usher. Or, or to speak to Heidi and, and to serve on one of the greeter teams. Greeting people as they come in. There could be a passion. You could start a ministry with that passion. Or you can join a ministry. Maybe your passion is the homeless. Then you go speak to Dave Grace because he's got a ministry that speaks to the homeless, the people who need to hear Christ on the streets and to be fed. Then what I've also done is I printed out a couple of gifts assessments and I've put them at the information counter. There's a couple there. But if you want to take a gift assessment and figure out what are my gifts because I want to serve in those gifts, then you take it. You fill it out, you get the results, and then you say, hey, I've got this gift, I can serve in this area. Or if you're trying to understand it, you're welcome to see myself or Pastor Mike, and then you can come and discuss your gift assessment, and we can say, well, why don't we get you to serve in these areas? Or, or how can we help you to, to, to serve in those gifts, or whatever it is? So they are there, or you can even email us, ccfomac at gmail.com, and we will send you that gift assessment if you don't want to pick one up physically. Then my last point on this is do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to because your value, your neighbor is valued just as much as you are. So just look at the person next to you right now. Just have a look at them and say, you are valued in this body today. Just look at someone next to you. Just tell them you are valued. Now I want you to remember their face as best as you can and try pray for them this week because I think they need just as much help as you do. Don't forget your fellow believers. Don't forget the people around you. Encourage them. Look after them. Pray for them. Make sure that they do not feel undervalued. Check in on them. Build them up. And don't let them get away. Help them feel like they are known and valued within the body of Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we are so grateful for the people that we have around us here today. And Lord, it goes beyond these four walls. We talk about the people online. We talk about the the other people that attend our church. But Lord... We think of the other churches in the area. We think of the other believers. We think of the people who don't go to church and do not feel they are plugged in or valued within the body. And Lord, we just want to pray for each and every single one of them. And we want to call them back into the body of Christ. We want to call them back to you. Lord, we want to see our community and our body in this valley grow and within the state of Washington grow, that people will come together within your body. Lord, help us to see people through your eyes. Lord, that we will be less judgmental and we'll be more encouraging. Lord, that we will find our own place and purpose. Help us to find our place and our purpose within the body. 
Lord, may we continue to grow within the body. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to understand our gifts and our passions and our talents. And Lord, we can use those within the body. Equip us, Lord. Impart into us. Use us. Uphold us. And I pray, Lord, that nobody will leave from here today without something on their hearts that will stir them to becoming a greater part of the body of Christ. That no one will leave here today and forget the face that they looked at just now. And Lord, that they'll remember to pray for them later on. And I pray, Lord, that you will use each and every single one of us according to your will, your plan, your purpose for our lives within the body of Christ. And we just want to say we love you and we are so grateful and we are just, we just are so excited for what you are going to do in our lives and in the lives of the people around us. And may your name be glorified in this house, in the local body. And Lord, may your name be glorified in the, in the, the, the global body. Lord, that, that your name will shine so brightly that the world will see that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is King forever because of your people within the body that make a difference, that are your voice, that are your hands and your feet. And we just pray that, Lord, may we be your hands and feet today. Watch over us, keep us safe, and protect us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, our memory verse, again, for this week is simple, and I pray that everyone will stand up next week, and everyone will remember this one, but it is this. In 1 Corinthians 12, verse 25, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. That there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. Will you stand with us as we sing? I pray that you will just be blessed and you'll go out the, today with a great blessing upon you that you'll become part and you'll know your plan and your purpose in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and reclaim your victory. Let it rise, let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall, we'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Let faith be a song that overcomes the raging sea. Let faith be a song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. 
the God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Amen. Have a great week, everybody.